All around the world, truck manufacturers are working to revolutionize the trucking industry. The emissions of the trucking industry are pretty huge and we rely on trucking every single day, be it to get food to the supermarket, to get goods and devices and cars and pretty much anything that needs to be shipped from one place to another is shipped using a truck. And that is why so many truck manufacturers around the world are looking into cleaning up their act, be it through hydrogen fuel cell technology, through compressed natural gas technology, or electric technology. And of course, we have Tesla and its semi, we have Nikola and its hydrogen fuel cell truck and battery electric truck. We've got Daimler doing loads of things around the world with its electric vehicle program. But I'm here today as a guest of Volvo, where we're going to see what Volvo has been doing with its electrified fleet program. Currently this is just a test fleet. It's part of Volvo's LIGHTS program. There's an acronym that is right there. But today I'm going to get to do something that I haven't ever done before. Drive a big rig. Well, sort of. Uh, it's either going to be a big rig tractor or it's going to be a box tractor. And don't worry, I'm on a race course and so I don't have to have that fully certified license to do so. But there's a little six-year-old me that's pretty excited right now. So it's electric, it's big, and it's a truck. Let's go. So this is the VNR electric. Let's put it through its paces. So the first thing we're gonna do is put it in gear, right? So yeah. put on the brake. Put on the brake, push. Yep, push. And hit then D. hit D. And we're ready to go. And then off we go. All right. Okay. So this is part of Volvo's prototype test fleet. Yeah, this is a pilot program for uh, the lights. Uh, and it, the Volvo lights, and this feels like like an internal combustion engine uh, Volvo truck, save for one thing, it doesn't have any engine noise. And with the batteries nice and low down, it's got this lovely center of gravity. It's a really gusty wind today, and I just took that corner a little bit faster than you'd want to take it in an internal combustion engine diesel truck, especially with the box on the back. And it's just handling it really nicely. It's a lot easier because there's no, no double declutching or you know split shift patterns to worry about. And it just has bucket loads of torque as well. So it's it's got maximum regen on it right now, and this this truck is going to be best suited to kind of inner city delivery purposes. It's not going to have a super long range, but it's going to be perfect for you know most urban routes, which are less than you know 100 to 150 miles a day. This is going to be perfect because you can charge it up overnight because this is a prototype vehicle. It has CCS2, which is what you see in Europe. And instead of having what we have in America, uh, now, wow, this is really smooth. Now, I actually had two rounds on this. <laughs> and I was told earlier on that this is exactly what you need if you're reversing into a loading dock. It's, it's much easier than doing it in an internal combustion engine vehicle, let me tell you. And as you saw, this has air brakes, just like any other large truck, but it also has regenerative braking, which is very powerful and can obviously help recapture some of the energy. You don't have to worry about engine braking because the regenerative braking is going to do it for you. The turning circle on this is insane. It really is nice and tight. This is not going to have a problem in most busy city streets. And it's got plenty of get up and go when you want to have it. You know, I'm put my foot to the floor now. That's 30 miles per hour. That is 40 miles per hour. And that's 45 miles per hour, which for a big truck is really picking up. I mean, okay, granted this is empty at the moment, but it's still moving reasonably quickly for, for a truck go around the corner here. So how, how would you say this compares to driving its internal combustion engine sibling? Uh, much more quiet. It's night and day, isn't it? Yeah, it's night and day. You don't have the shift points. Um, 
I was actually talking to someone yesterday and I was saying, I think we're going to have a future where we're going to see a different license for electric trucks because, you know, as long as you've got decent spatial awareness and you know where your the edges of the truck are, I think you could actually drive this without needing to have, you know, all of the the shift training that you would normally have on a truck. Of course, you have to learn how to use the trailer, but it's very impressive. Very nice indeed. Well, thank you very much. You're welcome. All right, let's see if we can bring this to a nice, that should turn easy out stop. Nice, slow <laughs> braking. The regen's a little bit hard because we're in level three. And of course, if this was full with what, 10 tons of stuff in the back, then you would need it to be really quite, um, quite brutal. If you look at the gauge, there's very little information here, but you don't really need a huge amount of information because you know, as long as you've got your, your, your parking brake pressure, your regular air brake pressure and um, how much power you're pulling and how fast you're going, that's really all you need to know. So there's a lot less distraction for the driver as well compared to your normal truck. And you don't have your shift lever down here, which means you've got more space in the, in the cabin. Mm -hmm. And the two speed gearbox, tell me about that. How does it change quickly? Is it just, it, does it automatically change? Yeah, it automatically changes between 10 and 20 miles per hour. Right. It is seamless. Uh, there's no clutch, right? So uh, it doesn't have to slow down actually to synchronize gears. And and so it's changing, switching. Is it switching between series and parallel operation for the motor, or is it is it an actual gearbox that? Well, it's an actual shift in the gearbox. Yeah. Okay, cool. So just to give you a little bit more torque to start with, yep. yeah. It's be interesting to see what what happens, you know, when these become a little bit more commonplace. That was a really cool experience. Not only is this super easy to drive and that could have some major implications for future truckers who want to learn to drive if they only have to train on an electric truck. The process of being certified to become a trucker could be a lot less bothersome. It could be a lot simpler, a lot cheaper to do. But of course, you've also got the lower emissions to thank. The particular truck I drove today, the box truck, is going to be best suited for last mile delivery solutions. It doesn't have a massive range. The truck, the box truck that I drove had four battery packs in. Each battery pack is about 60 kilowatt hours, I've been told. The tractor unit has eight battery packs in, so I'll let you do the math. But when you're towing a heavy trailer, you really do have to have some beefy battery packs and beefy motors to boot. This thing has got twin electric motors, it's got a two-speed gearbox, and it drives silky smooth. I would have thought that I was driving an electric car were it not for the fact that I was a long way off the ground <laughs> driving a truck. So yes, this is the future of electrified transport. I haven't driven Tesla Cybertruck, I don't expect I ever will, but if Volvo's project is anything to go by, I think the future of trucking could very much be electric, at least for short haul. We still have to worry about that long distance travel. Although there are things called trains. Maybe we should look into that too. Don't forget to like, comment and subscribe. You can support us through Patreon or Ko-fi and I'll see you very soon. Keep evolving.